We're still at the beginning of understanding mindfulness from a scientific perspective. Over the last 20 years, there's been an exponential increase in research on mindfulness from some 80 published papers in 1990 to over 600 in 2000. Yet compared to other behaviors that are known to improve physical and mental health, such as diet and exercise, there is relatively little research on mindfulness. There are two general types of research studies, studies that ask what mindfulness is and how to measure it, and studies that ask what benefits arise from practicing it. While the questions that scientists ask are probably no different from yours, the difference lies in how they seek the answers. Science is a methodology that uses third-person observation, by which we mean that it is an objective process that yields comparable knowledge no matter who does it. In contrast, mindfulness is a first-person or subjective methodology the observation of which is quite challenging. Imagine how hard it would be to decide which of two people is more aware. Putting mindfulness under the lens of science removes it from what it actually is, a subjective experience. Yet in doing so, we can gain an understanding of the shared elements of mindfulness as reported by many people and the changes in brain and body states detectable by current technologies and specialties, such as functional magnetic resonance imaging, immunology, and genetics. Yet no matter how well science describes mindfulness, it cannot capture the experience of it. Scientists can describe the chemical composition of an apple, its color, texture, and taste, but no description matches the experience of biting into an apple. Well, when we name mindfulness and measure it using the tools of science, we may want to remember that the name and the experience are not the same. This is why we look at mindfulness from the perspective of both science and art in this book. To truly understand mindfulness is not only to know about the science of it, but also practice the art of it.